Good morning po. Magandang umaga. Merry Christmas to everyone. Welcome to GCF East Christmas Worship Service. These days, we are enjoying celebrations with our families and friends. Of course, the whole reason for those celebrations is the coming of our Savior in human form. In humble surroundings and through a baby, who became a savior of the world and the Lord of life. May I ask everyone here in the sanctuary and those who are with us in, by a live stream uh, that if you are able, please stand and join me in reading the call to worship passage found in Isaiah chapter 9. Let, let us all stand, please. Our, our word called to worship passage is found in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. Let us read. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as we joy at the harvest as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the stop for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have bro broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling warrior in battle tumult, the every and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the, increase, of the increase of his government and the peace that there will be no end, and on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it, with, with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The seal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Let us all pray. Father of mercies, we, we acknowledge that you are our great, wonderful, and merciful God. We begin by recounting your wondrous deeds, so you have loved us by sending your own Son, Jesus Christ, who took on human flesh to become a perfect sacrifice for our sins. Thank you for the steadfast love. Even though we so often sin and fall short of your glory, your indwelling spirit convicts us, and through our Savior, our Advocate before you, we are cleansed again. Lord, as we celebrate in this Christmas season, we are aware that the realities of this fallen world can affect our joy in you. We ask that you fill our hearts with pure joy, that comes from you. While so much of our culture celebrate a superficial Christmas, help us to celebrate it right. May we set our affection, our gains on Christ being filled by the wonders of his incarnation. We thank you for the gospel, the good news that came to us bringing joy and hope for the people. We need not fear what this pandemic may bring to us because you are the Emmanuel, the God who is with us. We trust in your unfailing love, and we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Beautiful morning, church, and a Merry Christmas. In Scripture, there were 400 years of silence, and then Matthew. There was a Announcement by the angels to the lowly shepherds. How many of those who have heard this announcement knew the message? It makes us think about us today. Let's sing, hark the herald angels sing. Mark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Be son of and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. Through the 
message those angels brought to the slowly shepherds and it brought much joy let's sing about this joy to the world
give all praise and glory to God, the joy to the world. Good morning and uh, Merry Christmas to all. Uh, this morning I will be reading from the uh, book of uh, Micah uh, chapter 5 verses 2 to 5. This is about the promised Messiah. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from the ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. And he shall be their peace. Praise God for the reading of his word. Let us sing this next song, the first Noel. This coming Christmas, we really remember the birthday of Jesus Christ. Although we don't know the exact day and the date but that is the essence of this season
In Jeremiah 23, verses 1 to 6, the prophet proclaimed, Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who care for my people, you have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil deeds, declares the Lord. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall feel no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely, and this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. In the book of Matthew, Jesus asked his disciples, Who do people say I am? And they said, Some say that you're John the Baptist, you're Elijah or Jeremiah. And then Jesus turned again to his disciples, But who do you say? I am. This is the ultimate question, and the way that we answer this will depend how we will respond to Jesus. Let's come and behold the wondrous mystery. We will be when he comes. 
yes we will win when he comes Again, Merry Christmas po sa ating lahat. It's time for us to give to the Lord. Christmas is about giving. And God is our very example of this because He gave us on our, He gave, He, he gave first on our behalf. As it is written in John chapter 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. The Lord blesses us so that we may be blessed others, specifically with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just as the angel did on that first Christmas night, so as we offer our lives to, the, to Him this season of giving, in the same manner, let us give with thankful and cheerful heart, a heart that blesses and blessed. Let, let us pray. O aming Panginoon, purihin ka. Salamat po, Panginoon, dahil kayo po ang aming Diyos na suma sa amin. Kayo ang Diyos na patuloy at walang sawang nagmamahal at umiibig sa amin noon pa man, Panginoon. Salamat sa mga biyay at pagpapalang, Panginoon, na patuloy at walang sawa niyong pinagkakalob sa amin. Bagamat hindi po kami karapat dapat sa mga ito dahil kami po ay mga makasalanan, Itinurin niyo po kami, Panginoon, na inyong mga anak sa pamamagitan ng, in ng aming Panginoong Jesus. Salamat po sa biyaya at pag-ibig niyong ito. Panginoon, tanggapin mo nawa, Panginoon, ang aming mga kaloob sapagkat ito po, Panginoon, ang, ang paraan ng aming pagsamba gaya po ng inyong inutos na ang sino mang nagkakaloob ng buong puso at buong Ligaya dahil, dahil kayo po ang aming Diyos na pinagsisilbihan namin. Purihin ka, Panginoon, sa lahat ng iyong kab kabutihan sa aming buhay sa buong taon, Panginoon. Kayo po ang aming kasakasama at kayo po ang patuloy na nagbibigay kalakasan sa amin. Purihin ka, Panginoon, ang lahat ng ito ay aming papuri at pasasalamat sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. There are three ways we can continue in honoring the Lord through our giving. First, by offering box located at the door entrance of the church building. Our church is open from Tuesday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Sundays from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. Second is online bank transfer to Green Hills Christian Fellowship East Inc. BPI Peso current account number 4091004203 or UCPB dollar savings account number 11152000636 and and, or, and third is G, through GCF is PayPal account you can access at gcf does is dot org slash give slash in our church website Thank you and God bless. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we lift up our voices of prayer and praise today as we think, especially the birth of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, on that first Christmas morning. Lord, many people today will be celebrating Christmas Day with little or no understanding that in coming to earth in the form of a man, the Lord Jesus Christ came to die so that all who believe in his name might be saved from their sins and have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for sending 
the only begotten and eternal Son of your love, the Lord Jesus Christ, to be born as a tiny baby in such humble conditions so that the fallen race of mankind could be redeemed from their sin and be made sons and daughters of the Most High God through faith in His name. How we bless your holy name, O Lord, for all the goodness and loving kindness that you have extended to us. Thank you that Jesus set aside his glory to be dressed in human flesh, so that in the fullness of time, those that trust in his name might be made your sons and daughters and joint heirs with Christ himself. Thank you, Lord, that you never gave up on us. But you have allowed us, Lord, to regain fellowship with yourself simply by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give all of us, I pray, the light of your love in our hearts this Christmas time and the opportunity to tell of the good news of the gospel of Christ. To those that are perishing draw many into your kingdom i pray so that your name may be glorified and to you be all the praise and honor and glory and thanks for you alone are worthy amen and amen let us all stand up again and let's sing in christ alone so the Jesus asks, who do you say I am? Who is Jesus Christ? Let's look at the lyrics, lyrics of this song. Learn who Christ is. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song This cornerstone, this solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace What fears so still, when striving sees My comforter Strive 
to final breath. Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever blot me from his hand till he returns. Good morning, everyone. Blessed Christmas to you. And to those who are watching the live stream, I don't know if we're live. I know we're having technical difficulties, but to those who will be watching even later, we're happy that you could join us as we celebrate the Christ of Christmas. Right? So let's start with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, we are humbled. May even, Lord, be allowed to Sing these songs, Lord, from the heart. Uh, hearts washed and cleansed by the blood of Christ. We are grateful that we are able to celebrate Christmas with Christ in our lives. And this makes this celebration even more beautiful and meaningful. While the world celebrate confined in festivities and limited in a season. Lord, we sing and cry out and with joyful hearts blurt out these carols as hymns of praise. And we thank you, Lord, that even in the pandemic, Lord, we understand that the joy of your first coming would not be robbed by any virus. And the anticipation of your second coming makes us even glad, Lord, to live for you, even suffer for you. And if it is your bidding, Lord, even die for you. Indeed, Lord, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to worship you. And as we, like little kids, listen to our Loving Father, listen to his word. We pray that indeed, Lord, you would open our hearts up and be prepared to be embraced by your truth. Sanctify us by our truth. Your word is truth. This is our prayer with much thanksgiving in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ, our master, king, and friend. Amen and amen. I think I have shared this before in many Christmases already, and I think I've done this already as well in the previous pastorate, sa iba mga churches. I just want to say this, that Christmas is perhaps uh, one of the most powerful seasons in the year, diba? If not the most powerful season of all. Because during Christmas, things are magnified. It is during Christmas that what you have seems diba, enormous. That is why you enjoy your families, you enjoy meal together. But it, it is also during Christmas that what you lack or what you have lost seems great. Diba? That is why those who have family members who are overseas, you miss them so much. You miss them all the more during this season as a believer of Christ I've celebrated Christmas for 25 years as a person I have this is my 48th Christmas to some of you this may be your uh, first year of 
Christmas as a believer, maybe 30 years as a believer, but we understand what this season is about. We understand and we know who the reason for the season is. And I pray that the truth of the season is so powerful that it would still take our breath away. I pray that it would still captivate our soul, even in the pandemic. I know it's difficult. I know it's hard. I mean, we've seen some changes compared to last year. This is a second pandemic Christmas, if you will. We've seen things open up, but it's different compared to the last Christmas that we had, diba? Right? And I don't know about you. Um, because of the pandemic, I tend to savor Christmas carols, Christmas hymns more now. I tend to taste, if you will, every word of every Christmas hymn. Last Sunday, my family and I went to Faith Academy to be in a, an annual uh, um, festival, or if you will, um, that we, we observe, we do Christmas singing there. We did not do Christmas singing last year, did we? We didn't, right? So we, we went there, first time after the pandemic uh, hit. It was just profound singing carols with a community of faith from different walks of life. We had candles when we were singing. Of course, we were having physical distancing. And I just can't help but be amazed at how I see people were really worshiping God while we were singing carols. Compared to the world when they sing carols, it's just a, a festive and a seasonal song or songs, diba? Right? But to a believer who understands what this is all about, it, it was very heartwarming. It humbled me see, being in a community of faith and just singing hymns because we understand, especially now, that truth in these hymns are highlighted especially amidst the uncertainties that we all are in. One of the most powerful Christmas hymns that is very dear to me is the hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It was written in the Dark Ages. Originally, it was written in Latin, and it was translated to many other languages. It was a hymn about going to God for hope crying out to God for help. It's, it's a hymn. It's a Christmas song, if you will, of God's people in the midst of a difficult situation crying out for help. Let me try to sing one, the, the first uh, um, verse and j just listen to the words. And you know this, very familiar. This is very important with our passage today. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here. Until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. I don't know about you, maybe because of the pandemic, it makes this song relatable. In these trying times, maybe it's you saying, Lord, Lord, kindly end this pandemic already. Lord, please destroy this virus. Or maybe, Lord, we got hit by the, by the typhoon. How can we now celebrate Christmas? Lord, I lost a loved one. I lost my wife. I lost my son. I lost my, my husband. How can I celebrate Christmas? Very, very relatable. Let me read. I'm not going to sing. Let me read the rest of the song. O come, O come, thou Lord of might, 
who to thy tribes on Sinai's height. In ancient times did give the law in cloud and majesty and all. O come thou rod of Jesse free, kindly listen to the lyrics. Thine own from Satan's tyranny, from depths of hell thy people save, and give them victory o'er the grave. O come thou day spring, come and cheer, our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows put to flight. O come, thou key of David, come, and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high, and close the path to misery. O come, thou wisdom from on high, and order all things far and nigh. To us the, the path of knowledge show, and cause us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. There seems to be in the midst of pain, hope. That someday, someday God would hear, that someday indeed God would save, that someday God would send rescue. There is a feeling of anguish, a sense of urgency. Again, this song, this chant. This Christmas carol is a prayer, a petition for God to send a Savior, to save Israel, to ransom them from their captivity. You know what? God indeed heard their prayer. And God answered through the most unlikely means. God did not answer by sending an army of angels. With their might, God answered this prayer through a baby. That baby born in the manger, a baby like no other. To those who are parents, we understand that the birth of babies are a welcome sight. Diba? You remember when, when you were first born, even your second born, diba? Uh, came. I still remember there were mixed emotions nung pinanganak si Yana. Uh, in fact, she's here. I don't want to embarrass her. She was vacuumed out. Kasi nahihirapan si Rita ilabas siya. So she was vacuumed out. And when I first, I first saw her, conehead. Parang conehead ng anak mo. But the doctor said, yeah, it, it would go back to its normal size. I was so happy. When I saw her, and even though I was just holding her for the first few hours, I, I had already plans for her. I had so much hope and dreams for her. Yes, I want her to be healthy. I want her to, to live a healthy life. I want her to, to grow up loving the Lord and, and serving her. And that is the usual hope of parents, right? The expectations of parents. When a baby is born, that they would grow up, that they would be healthy, that they would have a good life, all babies except for one. Because this baby was born to die. This baby was born to suffer. And friends, this is not incidental. This is very fundamental for the Christian faith. This baby was born to die. So that you and me, those who would believe in Him, would not perish but have eternal life. But this is not just a baby, friends. At the heart of Christmas is this wonderful baby. And we can summarize Christmas in one word. Emmanuel. God would answer the cries of His people by being there Himself. But God, Emmanuel, God with us. If you have your Bibles with you, kindly turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 9. It was read a while ago, but let me read it again. And I don't think it would be too much for the asking if I ask you to stand with me as we read Isaiah 9, 6. Listen to the word of the Lord. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. 
and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. May God bless the reading of his word. You may now take your seats. This is the Christ of Christmas. What Isaiah proclaimed is the baby born in the manger, God who is with us. Earlier in Isaiah, Isaiah mentioned about this child who will be born. Isaiah 7, 14, this is what we read. Therefore, the Lord himself, who? The Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Friends, what we celebrate during Christmas is not just a baby in a manger. And what we celebrate is not just that infant, that cute infant. We celebrate the promise incarnate deity. A prophecy that God himself, ang Diyos mismo, would appear, would be with his people in the form of a human infant. This baby was born to be with his people. God himself in human form. During Pasco, we tend to focus more on the baby. We tend to focus our attention on the infancy of Christ, but the greater truth of the season is that this child is God. I want to draw your attention to this child that Isaiah was referring to in this passage. This infant in the manger is the infinite one. The cute baby cooing is the creator who spoke everything into existence by his very word. And this infant change the course of history for history as they say is his story let me ask you now can you name can you think of a person can you think of anyone who has not heard of christmas or who has not heard of any christmas song has anyone written more music pieces about anyone Diba? Meron bang nasulat na kanta na mas marami pa tungkol kay Kristo? Tungkol sa kapanganakan ni Kristo? Can, can you name one? Has anyone of great stature been offered a worldwide accepted masterpiece? Handel's Messiah, di ba? Among the prolific writers and scholars that we have, that has ever lived, do you know which personality is most written about? Si Gandhi ba? Si Luther ba? Have you heard of any other person who has changed even how we view time? Before his birth was called B.C. Now they, they call it Common Era. But we know it's B.C. before. His death and resurrection is called A.D. Common Era or B.C.E. Before Common Era and Common Era. Can you tell me of anyone who has changed the course of history and how we view time? Bawala. This is the Christ of Christmas. This is the Christ, our Savior, our Lord. So looking at Isaiah 9, the prophecy about this infant to be given to his people as they cried out, help, save us. Let's first of all look at this infant and look at his identity. Let's marvel at Christ as we look at his Kingship and his kingdom. Let's look at his identity. Look at first part of verse 6. For to us a child is born. This statement tells us of his humanity. 
This child is God made flesh. This child is God who is with us. And to borrow the language of John chapter 1, verse 14, and he became flesh and dwelt among us. He is God incarnate. But friends, this is not just any other man. We, we read from Scripture that he was there from the very beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So, so what's the big deal? So this God is man, so what's the big deal about him being man? Well, he is the perfect man. He is not just any other man. He is the perfect man. The Bible says he grew in stature and in favor with God and man. Meaning God was pleased with him and men understood that while he was growing up, he was a righteous man. In his baptism, a voice from heaven was heard, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. God is delighted in this man. Friends, when I emphasize that he is man, I'm talking about the perfect man. Can you tell of a scripture where, where we would read that Jesus repented, that Jesus asked for forgiveness? Jesus was impeccable. Even his enemies found him to be blameless. Ano sabi ni Pontius Pilate? I find no fault in him. The centurion who was there when he was crucified agrees that surely this is the Son of, man, of God. And this perfect man, the one who was born, is also our high priest. And so as we go through this pandemic, dear ones, you can cry out to this perfect man who is our high priest, who intercedes for you and me forever who understands what you and I are going through. He can sympathize and empathize with us because he too was tempted yet did not sin. For unto us a child was born, but there's more to this child that was born. As Isaiah goes on to say, to us a son is given. Napansin nyo? very intentional si Isaiah. Isaiah is very intentional as he gives us hints on the identity of this king. Yes, he was born. A child was born. But this tells us that the son was given. This points to the pre-existence of this son. A son will not be born. The child was born, but the son is given. It speaks of the Savior's existence long before his birth. Diba? In fact, let me take you to Micah chapter 5. It was read a while ago. This prophecy that speaks explicitly of who this king is. Micah 5 verse 2. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel. Then he goes on to say, from whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. This is a prophecy of the birthplace of the Messiah. It will be in Bethlehem. Tama? But kindly pay attention to the prophecy again as it gives us more details of the one who is going to be born in Bethlehem. He shall be the ruler in Israel, and it reads, whose coming forth is from old. From of old, yes, he will be born, but his existence did not and will not start with his birth. It's from of old. It's much, much earlier than that. In fact, I've been getting from ancient days. His beginning was from eternity past. He was already God. The second person of the Trinity, given to be Savior. 
ang Pasko ay sumapit. Sabi nga ng kanta. But do we understand really what, what Christmas is about? Why do we sing? Why do we need to rejoice? Because this son was born. Oh, the, the, the child was born. The son was given. Telling us that this is the infinite God-man. Bakit ba kailangan magkatawang-tawang Diyos? This is very element, elementary, very fundamental, very basic. Let me share with you Philippians 2, verse 6. Who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of man, he came as the Son of God, God in human form, para saan? To conquer sin and death forever. So that those who would believe in Him would not perish, but have eternal life. For to us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Meaning, He is a gift. He was given. Meaning, this son who was given is not earned. You and I cannot be good enough to earn this son given purely by grace that we receive him. Can any one of us claim that you are worthy to earn Christ? Can any one of us claim that you deserve Jesus? Di ba wala? Unto us a child is born. Unto us a child is given. He is a gift. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. But don't take it as automatic. I was watching the news kainang umaga. Uh, of course, we, we can't expect them to know Scripture. But it saddens me that this is the thinking of a lot of people. Uh, I know he's not a believer. Sabi niya nung news anchor. Thank you, Jesus, for saving all of us. And I was like, He is given. He's not earned. By grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, this eternal Son given to us in spite of us, this Son who is, according to Paul, is the indescribable gift, the inexpressible gift. The greatest gift of all. Don't believe Whitney Houston that the greatest gift of all, love of all is to learn to love yourself. The greatest love of all is to be loved by God, by His sovereign grace, and love Him in return. Ito yung Christ of Christmas. The Son of Man, Son of God, 100% man, 100% God given to be Savior. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son was given. Again, let me ask, why was there a need for this? Why was there a need for God to be man? Let me share with you some. Jesus became man to reveal God to men. He became a man so that he would live under the law and obey every bit of it with perfection because we fail to do so. And because of that, those who would believe in Him would be imputed on Him or on her the righteousness and the perfect righteousness of Christ. He was born so that He would die. God requires perfection. Diba? Be holy for I am holy. Be perfect for I am Perfect. God requires a perfect sacrifice. Is there anyone who is perfect? Oh, meron. God is perfect. But how can he die? Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Ah, that explains why he came to be man. He was born so that he might be able to die because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. God cannot die. He is perfect 
but he cannot die. So the eternal Son of God became man in order to die to be the substitutionary and satisfactory sacrifice for the righteous indignation of God. Why was there a need for God as Son to be man? So He can show us the perfect example of a life pleasing to God. God became flesh to show us a pattern for godly living. Jesus became flesh, as I mentioned a while ago, so that He can truly identify with His people as our high priest, as He represents us. Jesus, the eternal Son of God, became the Son of Man so that those who would believe in Him will be sons and daughters of God Most High. Jesus was born of a virgin so that those who put their trust in Him will be born again. Jesus came down to earth so that those who would surrender to Him might have a place in heaven. These truths among many others, stand on the shoulders of that truth. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son of given. Son of man, son of God, given to this wretched world so that those who would believe will be saved. That's the Christ of Christmas. Ito yung kanyang identity. He is king. But with regards to him being king, what's, what's it like? Let's read on. And the government shall be on his shoulders, telling us that this king is the king of kings. As if the hypostatic union of this child is not enough to blow our minds away. Fully God, fully man. Sabi ni Isaiah, this Christ of Christmas is one who has absolute authority and sovereignty. Sabi, in Him lies all authority in heaven and on earth. Can you show me someone? Can you show me a child this powerful? There has never been a child with this kind of authority. And it reads, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. It's talking about the government of Israel as he will be the greater son of David, but goes beyond that. He will also be the absolute sovereign king of all the governments. For all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. God has highly exalted Christ and given him a name that is above all names that there is no other name by which one can be saved except by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this child who is born this son who is given on whom the government and all of history shall be on his shoulders he is the king of kings and lord of lords I pray that we understand that Dear ones, ito yung diwa ng Pasko. This is the reason for the season. Would you dare leave him out of the celebration? If he is this sovereign, if he is this authoritative, would you dare leave him out of our celebration? Maybe would say, ah, hindi naman na. Oh, we, we don't do that. We would not have the audacity to, to, to make everything about us. But, talaga? I pray that as we read every word in this single verse, we are being driven to our knees in grateful submission. Nagpatuli sa Isaiah. And this is wonderful. After identifying to us this king who's not like any other, he cannot help but show us his activities. He could not contain himself but describe to us what kind of kingdom this king has. 
and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. What kind of kingdom? A kingdom without confusion. We are aware that we live in a time in, in a world where there are fake news. And if you understand when this was written, this would have been such a great news. Bakit? This promised one has infinite wisdom. This one who carries the weight of all the government on his shoulders is characterized by infinite wisdom. Imagine ha having so much power yet limited wisdom. Diba? It follows then now that since you are the authority over all, then you need to have infinite wisdom. That means he knows what is best in every situation. That means he is not a dictator who has blind spots and cannot see the way. He is the one who knows everything. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is a wonderful counselor. By the way, yung King James is separate nila eh. Wonderful counselor. No, I think it, 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 they go together. Because you see an adjective and a noun. He is wonderful counselor. What kind of counselor? Wonderful. What kind of God? Mighty. What kind of father? Eternal father. He is wonderful counselor. Yung salitang wonderful, the, the word wonderful, has the idea of being astonished, astounding, amazing. This word in the original language is usually associated with the supernatural. Why am I saying this? All the rest have natural and temporal counsel. This King of Kings has amazing, supernatural, infinite wisdom. In fact, sabi ng scripture, 1 Corinthians 3.19, For the wisdom of this world is folly with God. For it is written, He catches the wise in their craftiness, and again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. So this is someone who has infinite wisdom. Let's look ahead dito sa ating binabasang book and hear from the prophet himself about the wisdom of this wonderful counselor. Isaiah 11, verse 2. It reads, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. It is He to whom we must turn to, to make sense of life's confusion. Sadly, nowadays, people turn to psychiatrists, psychologists, therapists, self-help experts, and other human advisors when we have the most critical truth of all, the one that changes lives, the truth found in Christ and His Word. We've been going through Samhar 19. We'll be wrapping up uh, next Sunday. But what we've found there, what we've studied there, is that the, the Word of God is significant. Napaka-importante sa buhay ng Kristiyano. Now let me ask you, would you not like a counselor who knows everything? Who doesn't have any blind spots? Jesus is that counselor. And friends, if you are still trying to figure out by yourself your way to salvation, if you're still trying to earn your way into heaven, by your good works, maybe by your giving, let me remind you that there is no way but this way, the way, the truth, and the life. He is 
king of kings who has infinite wisdom, perfect will, perfect timing, perfect counsel. I pray, friends, that you would embrace this Christ. I pray that for the first time, perhaps, you would indeed celebrate Christmas in the truest sense of the word. Government is resting on his shoulders because he is a wonderful counselor. Then I say it goes on. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. So what kind of kingdom? Kingdom with no chaos. This brings us back to Isaiah 7, where Isaiah said that his name shall be Emmanuel, which means God with us. Itong baby na ito is God incarnate. This infant is the infinite one whose power is undiminished. Sabi nga dito, He is mighty God. If He is mighty God, then His kingdom would have no chaos. Because He is powerful enough to bring forth order in His root. I understand what you're going to say. Well, we don't see it now. Yes, we won't. But He will someday. Only God is mighty enough to rule in a kingdom where there would be no confusion, where there would be no chaos. He is the God of order. He spoke forth the universe to existence. He is mighty to sustain it. He is mighty enough to save you and He is mighty enough to sanctify you. Naalala niyo po ba nung kayo unang naligtas when you got saved? Do you remember how God changed your lives beautifully? How He set things in order sa inyong buhay? How He made you a new creature? He alone did that with His mercies and His grace because He is mighty God. As the wonderful counselor, he has all the answers and can tell us all that we need to know. As mighty God, he makes sure that by his might that he will see us through. This means that he has the power to bring to completion all his divine providences. Kasama doon ang hirap, kasama doon ang mga struggles. Because this mighty God caused everything to work together for good to them who love Him. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, a kingdom without confusion. Mighty God, kingdom with no chaos. Everlasting Father, telling us He is the King whose kingdom is without complexity. Ano yung sabihin to? When we see Father here, it is not referring to the first person of the, of the Trinity. Other people take it as that. When we know in the context, Isaiah was talking about the one who would be given by the Father. So what's the point of him being the everlasting Father? Right? This is not saying that he is the same as the Father. But what this is saying that as a father to his people, he would be their father forever. He would be caring for them. This is not talking about the father and the son being the same. No, this promised one, the son being given, his affections towards his people is like a father. And what kind of father? An everlasting father. That means that His care for you would be forever. That means that His provision for you would be forever. That means His correction for you as well will be consistent with His nature. Friends, in a world where there are red tapes, di ba? Dying red tapes sa government, 
This king's kingdom is far from being like that. He requires no bureaucracy. He does not need any support staff. Hindi niya kailangan ng maraming staff. His shoulders are strong enough to carry all the government because he is the mighty God. His rule will be without confusion because he is the wonderful counselor and he can easily do that because his care is eternal as a father. Right? Complexity happens when you have a fallen man and make up their fallen system throughout history. This is the promise of the child who is born, the son who was given, whose name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, and Eternal Father. His kingdom is with no confusion, a kingdom with no chaos, and a kingdom with no complexity. That in itself is comforting, diba? Right? But more than that, that name, Eternal Father, talks about His unending care. If you are having a hard time, even right now, celebrating Christmas, maybe you just can't celebrate because life's been difficult for you. Maybe you got really hit hard by this pandemic. Maybe you're scared. Turn to this child who was born, the son who pre-existed, given, who's strong enough that all governments are resting on his shoulders, who is wise enough that his counsels are wonderful, And when you talk about counsel, his truth, he can carry it out because he is mighty God. And his care for you is eternal because he is the eternal father. But it also says that he is the prince of peace. Only in Christ can you have kingdom, a kingdom with no conflicts. This is the king was born kindly take note of the order of this name addressed to this baby the Christ of Christmas he alone has the perfect counsel he is the mighty God he is powerful enough to bring to pass all his counsel he is the eternal father who speaks to us with eternal value and cares with it an unending, unending care. And when we embrace His will, He will give us peace. He offers peace from God to all who are recipients of His grace. He makes peace with God for those who surrender to Him in faith. And He walks the peace of God and He brings the peace of God to those who walk in Him. As we are made familiar to the beginnings of his earthly life was celebrated by a choir, diba? A choir of uh, angels. And we know that they announced to the shepherds, peace on earth. In a sense, there was never really peace before he was born. Because there was conflict existing between God and man, first and foremost. But the word peace does not just mean absence of conflict. Peace means shalom. Peace means wholeness. Peace means well-being. Peace means wholeness to our brokenness. As the Prince of Peace, He can give you wholeness. He can make you whole. As the Prince of Peace, He alone can make you whole. He can complete you. As the Prince of Peace, He alone can bring springs of living water from within. 
As the Prince of Peace, He alone can give us life in its fullness. It saddens me. Hindi ko lang alam yung, yung, yung statistics now. But before the pandemic, studies were shown that marami nag-suicide during Christmas season. And if only they knew that Christmas is not about them. If only they knew that Christmas is not, is not even about families or children or presents. If only they knew the Christ of Christmas, I don't think they would even do that. Because they would know that this child was born, was born to die. The son who was given is one who has good counsel, perfect counsel, mighty enough to save, cares for you as an everlasting father, would give you peace because he is the Prince of Peace. Sad to say, to those who did that, na nagpakamatay, there's no hope for them anymore. But to us who are here, who, who may have friends who are having difficulty celebrating Christmas, I pray that you would point them to the Christ of Christmas. Diba, how ironic that people would take their lives in such a time when we know that there was already peace on earth and goodwill to men. This just goes to show that celebrating Christmas without Christ is futile, diba? Right? You need to have the peace that only Christ can give. If you would just look at verse 7. Saberito. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. It is only Christ who can give you a peace that have no ending. That means his reign is forever. And it there, if you would like to find a time where he is not the king, you would not find that time. If you would like to find a time where he doesn't provide peace, there would not be that time. If you would try to find a time where he cannot give you good and perfect counsel, there will be uh, no sense to looking for it. Friends, this is the Christ of Christmas. I know we know this already. It's like singing to the choir. But there's just heaviness in my heart that maybe, just maybe, the pandemic has hit you hard that you are having a hard time celebrating Christmas. Focus your eyes on Christ, not on you. Focus your eyes on Him, not on what's going on. Focus your eyes on Him who is able to make sense of all things that are happening. For unto us a child is born, but lest we forget, the us there is not everyone. You cannot celebrate Christmas automatically. Who is the us? The context that Isaiah was referring to is that those who rejoice, those who believe, as was read in verse 3. Friends, there is no Savior, no hope, no peace, no eternal life, no mighty power, no wise counsel for those who do not know Jesus. And the best gift that you can give for Christmas, I know some of you, maybe siguro virtual lang, or, or you would ha, uh, be able to, to be with your families and friends. I pray that you would, more than giving them gifts, give them Christ. Share them Christ. Si Kristo lamang po ang kailangan natin sa panahon ngayon. Even before the pandemic, especially now in this pandemic. And to those of us who by faith, through His grace, are saved, I pray that we would never ever forget as we celebrate Christmas, who we're celebrating. It's not you, it's not me, it's not your friends, it's not your family, it's not even your kids. This season is so powerful that He was the one who gave and in return, we want to give. Diba? 
I pray that we would not miss out on the power of the season. I pray that we would not miss out the Christ of Christmas. And I pray that we would not be ashamed to preach Christ. Especially now. Especially now. Don't wait. Don't waste the pandemic. Don't waste this perfect timing for people to hear about the good news. To somehow, by God's grace, celebrate Christmas in the truest sense of the word. Right? For to us a child is born, and to us a child is given. Uh, for to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Brethren, this is the Christ of Christmas. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for this familiar passage, this familiar message. And we pray that the familiarity of the message would not lose the profundity of the truth that we need to be reminded of, especially now, Lord, especially now. And as we um, look forward, Lord, to tonight, as we um, celebrate with families and friends, loved ones, as we gather around the table with um, feasts, we pray that we would never, ever forget who we're really celebrating. We pray that we would never, ever forget why we were saved to declare your excellencies to shine as the noonday sun to those who are perishing would see the great news indeed of salvation found only in Christ. Maraming salamat pong muli, Panginoon Diyos, sa simplicity. We just want to thank you for the simplicity of our celebration nowadays. Thank you for stripping us of all the tangents. And we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to focus more on you. We celebrate you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, for being the indescribable gift for those who would believe in you. We love you. We praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. May we invite everyone to please stand and let's sing together this last song. All glory be to Christ.
Christmas.